All right. Good morning, traders. Welcome to the live trading webinar today with Scott Pulsini. We do this every Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, it's so that you can get access to and peek over the shoulder uh, a professional trader with their reading of the order flow, how they use it within their setups, how they manage their trades, etc. Uh, you know who Scott is. He's been with us for um, over a few years now, um, and uh, I will. He does offer mentoring uh, services. I'll put this into the chat for you. Uh, and uh, got to go through the disclosures, and then we'll turn it right over to Scott. Uh, it's important to understand these disclosures, though. Uh, general disclosure: all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be, should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so, and... Let's see here. It looks like for some reason, <laughs> uh, hold on a minute here. Uh, this is not looking correct. Hold on. Sorry about this. There we go. And let me hold on a minute. I'm sorry about this, guys. Just a minute here. Scott, are you there? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Sorry. Don't have the don't have the setup here correct in the recording. Okay, now it looks good. Okay. So uh, yeah, ready to go, Scott. So uh, whenever you're ready to start sharing your screen. And then I will project that. You got my screen. Uh, hold on a minute. Just a minute. Got it. Let's go. Okay. All right. So I'm currently long. Yes, this is a very risky trade with Powell's about to testify or starting to testify. So this thing could do anything. You know, the setups, it's just like with these headlines lately, it's been very difficult. And then the setups may be perfect. And then something comes out and these are just all negated. And it's, you know, it's brand new, a brand new situation when a headline comes out. So Powell's speaking right now. So this is probably going to come stop me out. But I thought it was worth the risk for a rip up because these markets look at least short term bullish uh, based on structure. You can see here <clears throat> we had this, uh, we, we broke down from this balance a few weeks ago and held it, moved lower, and then fast forward to recently. Try to break down out of this balance. We built more balance and then we ripped through the high volume note of this. So, this is a failed breakdown of this larger structure. And now we're up here. So, you know, with Paul testifying, this thing could pull back, but I still think we're going to do that. For some reason, if we don't, then, you know, we're going to do that. So, you can also make this one bigger balance as well, right? And we broke out of that also. So, um, again, that was, I probably should have just waited for him to speak, but. That was my decision, and I'm going to take it on the chin. Um, obviously, these markets are nuts. Crude is just out of line. I mean, the ATR in crude right now, 5-minute ATR, is 103 ticks. It's usually like 20, so 
that's, uh, you know, if we get a setup, I'll probably trade it, but just realize if you're trading this, you, you know, you have to adjust your size because this thing is swiping 100 points, 100 ticks at a time, you know, a dollar at a time. So you know, obviously we came up here earlier and touched 115. I mean, it's just, it's literally moving two, 300 ticks at a, at a time. So um, I didn't get stopped out yet, but I'm fully expecting to stop out. And we'll just wait for a new setup. Um, so the reason I got long this quickly was so there was a big double whammy before the open here. Um, I love the I get to get waterboarded too with the tick, the tick strike here, so I get to listen to my losses too. It's really fun when it's going against you. Um, being sarcastic, obviously. So you had a big stop run here. This was. Uh, S and PI size for by ES seven hundred contracts. Let's go back over here. I'll show you might be getting right back into this again you know this is a very touchy time when this guy's talking right this market could do anything but you know, if the big money starts coming in then we'll, we'll be able to have, obviously have a better gauge survive to stop out again there so this is still coming in here it's not quite threshold 657 I will uh, Again, this is basically a crapshoot, right? It's like you can you can have the volume, you can have your setups or whatever you trade off of, and then you just gotta hope that Paul doesn't say something against your position. That's all it is right now. So, you know, if you are taking the same trades as me, which is not, you know, this is not a mirroring trade room mirroring trade room um just be aware that you know this is basically like rolling the dice right now with him talking so <clears throat> um i could move this down below here but i'm just gonna you know i don't want to keep just trailing the stop down and take a huge loss on it if this comes down stops me out and then some way holds it and then doesn't get an atr below this zone to negate this this setup here then i'll go back long once we get a, a 80 percent of an atr about the you know back above this zone but i'm not going to keep trailing this down i'm just going to take my medicine and especially in this situation with him speaking. So um, so again, this was close to threshold and it, it came in for a while, so that's why I drew this zone. So the way we trade these is, uh, for sure, I wanna see where I am in the Ludwig, Ludwig levels. That's the reason I call them Lug, so I don't have to say that 40 times a day. Um, we are above the yellow, so I will be aggressive. I will enter setups, my SI indicator setups. I have six distinct setups that I trade off of in, in important areas um, that I will I will take. So for instance, this ice just came in here. If this pops a 80% of an ATR, that's my aggressive entry. Um, conservative entry would be if, so far on the short side, since we're above the yellow, I would be conservative to go short. So I need to see a full ATR, five minute ATR retest failure, and then 80%, then I'll get in. Um, but on and that's what I just did up here. I got in aggressively on the last I set up. Um, and that was up here, obviously, at 03.75. So then, so that's the second step, as you see where we are in the lugs. And then you go to your, or I go to my ATR, ATR 7.36. And I have my little handy dandy spreadsheet. All right, I was just stepped out again. Yes, 5.88, so six points. That was nice of him to stop me out to the tech. I, that's the first time I've seen that before in my trading career. Um, six points above here is going to be 4,400, exactly. So I will get right back in, and I would probably bet that's going to be the low tech right there. That was, that was nice of them. Um, so I'll get back in on this setup. That's aggressive. Six points above here is 80% of a five-minute ATR. So let's see what happens. Again, guys, if you're mirroring, you just be better be ready for nonsense because of this guy talking. All right. Uh, nothing really going on anywhere else, though. I'm not hearing any grains fire off. Wheat's been limit up like it's limit up again today. Ridiculous. I think this is the third or fourth day in a row that I hit limit up. You can see this. I think it's 
It used to be 50 cents, now it's 75, but it's just sets the limit up. It's just hysterical. It doesn't matter where I put this order. That's the, that's the low. All right, here we go. Get ready for another fill. A second here. You know, so I, I continue to be bullish, obviously, because of the structure that I just showed you. We're above the yellow lug. And Q earlier. Touched the red lug, and this is pre-market. Failed. There was a setup up here on it, but I didn't want to go short right before the lug, and then that that happened. So, again, this is just going to be bouncing around until this guy gets on talking, and I have no idea what time that is. Yesterday, he talked for like two hours. So, I would just like to to go one tick lower than my order, and I'll just I'll stop complaining. Just one tick. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Um, so what else? We might as well look at structure stuff since nothing's really going on here. This is NASDAQ. You can see it's entering in a very important area as well. We had, you can make this one big one. You know, we had little ones inside of the big one. All right, so you had this, we tried to break out, built new balance, broke down, retested the bottom, failed. Now, came back up, we built balance. So again, this is the bigger one. I volume node would be right about there. We have balance here. We're trying to break out of this balance if we get through the high volume node of this at HVN, right? That's where the most trade occurred in a balance. If we get through there, then we're coming up probably to this guy. If this somehow fails, that'll be a fail breakout of this most recent structure and then we're having much lower. So. You know, like I said, I mean, the, with these headlines firing off all day long, it's just treacherous, treacherous waters. I tell my trade room, you know, either cut down your size or just don't trade right now. I mean, there's no reason to throw away money on, on ridiculous headlines, you know, and you, you never, some, some of it's rumors too. So you just, it's, you're just opening yourself up to unnecessary losses. So just be careful if you do trade this stuff. So, Scott, a question, like, I mean, basically, when you're when in, in a kind of geopolitical or, you know, data-driven market, um, you're still, you're trading the way that you normally trade with your setups, uh, and, uh, but you just, you're just reducing size and, uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, widening out stops? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't change anything. I just use the, the ATR, right? So, right. obviously, when... Geopolitical, the ATR is going to increase, kind of like uh, crude right now, sweet crude <laughs> at 98.8, 98 .8, right? So I'm trading everything the same, but the, the, the issue is you can have the best trade in the world, it's working, and then something comes out and they say something and the thing just rips the other way, right? So that that's the issue. So, you know, you don't know if that's going to happen. So you got to stop, stop, sell, and Q, 168 contracts. If you elect to trade, these markets, then you just have to be aware that that can happen at any time. All right, so I wasn't the low tech finally, though, so that makes me happy. So now, so my point is don't give up. Like if you have a system, if you're you're using the icebergs or whatever your system is, you don't give up on it right now. If you take some losses, if you do choose, choose to trade, don't give up on it. It's just, you, know, you can't control headlines, right? So that's why if you don't like that type of risk, then just don't trade right now. This is a perfect time to work on your trading, work on your playbooks, work on your setups. And get really good at it go back and practice that's another incredible feature from bookmap where you can go back and replay the day and look at the setups and see you know put on trades like you're actually trading it's it, it's perfect so it's a perfect time to work on that stuff but again if you choose to trade in this just you, you can't cry if you get smoked on a headline you just got to expect it so <clears throat> but yeah i mean i cut down my size but the reason i'm cutting down my size is because the volatility is higher so but I'll just trade it normal and, and hope nothing comes out while I have my position on, basically. All right, so we're headed now to the yellow lug here. You know, so you can see, so when we draw a new lugs form, these lugs are here and we form a new one, it should hold directional yellow and prior red if it's gonna continue to be bullish. And you can see this did, 
right? And we hug, we hug this all night long, and now we just moved up. Now we're just going back to here. So this is still, you still have to assume we're going to the red unless something changes, right? So meaning, one, you shouldn't, you shouldn't see any bearish, flat out bearish setups, actually, speaking of bearish setups. I could trade this to the short side if this gets an ATR below here. So let's keep an eye on this. Um, I'm not excited about that because of the structure stuff I just showed you, but I will take trades, you know, opposite of my longer term view. I mean, that's just my thesis. Things can change, obviously. So 7.95 is your five minute ATR. So again, what did we say? It was six, six points. Hold on, I lost my. Need to see eight points below here because remember this is still above the yellow lug right so i this was the setup right i need to see eight points below which we did not get so we needed to get down to about 80 81 ish retest failure then i'll go short right i i don't that's the conservative entry the aggressive entry, which I was willing to take because we're, again, above the yellow lug, was just 80% of a, a five-minute ATR out of this zone, right? Which technically I still can take because we this is not negated as a long setup, right? Because we didn't get a full ATR below here. If this gets a full ATR below here, then the idea, the idea of a long is negated based on because it shouldn't get an ATR below here, right? So that, this is how I trade, right? From trading these things for two and a half years, three years, this is what I've you know watched over and over and over the best way to trade these things, right? It doesn't mean it's always going to retest. That's what you have to understand, right? So that's the way I trade it. That I trade it conservative, and for some reason, if this just goes like this, and, and I'm out of luck, right? And that happens often, not that often. Many, you know, I'd say 80% of the time it will retest the zone, but 20% of the time it just keeps going. And then you have the right trade idea. You just you know. I'm just not in the trade, so I'm willing to take that risk because, again, we're above the yellow lug. If we get below the yellow lug, then I'll be taking these setups aggressively. So we're right here right now, so we'll see what happens here. I'm firing up NASDAQ right now. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. So another thing you want to keep an eye on that I keep an eye on, tell my room nonstop all day long, is you want to keep an eye on this volume, the relative volume, right? You want to be very careful taking trades when the relative volume is well below average. So right now it's okay. So again, this is the this relative volume is on a um, on, is on Sierra chart which you can get, you know, other platforms have it as well. But the thicker swim is a different relative volume than, than this one. This one is showing you the exact time period I have it set for the last 30 days, right? So this exact time period, so 100 is 100%, meaning normal, right, average. So you can see we're, we're normal right now, so that's trail. You want to be very careful when the volume gets down to 50 60 70%, and that's when the algos just have their heyday, and they just whipsaw traders nonstop. When you start seeing stuff like this, that's the big money coming in and you can expect, you know, big moves either way, you know, continuation or rejection. But you, you want to be very careful when it gets like this because, you know, that's when you get the, the chop and that's when algos just feast on us traders. All right, so that's a full ATR now. So like I said, you know, we're above the yellow lug. You shouldn't be seeing bearish setups. So something's changing here. So now if this comes up here retest fails I will take a short 
if I don't have that doesn't happen and we move a little lower we'll be below the yellow lug and then if I get another setup I'll take the short aggressively let's take a look here so the yellow lugs 4378 and three quarters so we'll see what happens here speaks You know, 150 is my threshold. I like to see closer to 200, but I'll mark this up. You can see they're hammering these stocks. So the other thing I want to look at, the new uh, hero indicator. Let's see what that looks like. So this is interesting, right? So this is showing the black line is the market. And the blue line is the total puts and calls. Let's see what it looks like. So calls, and they're buying boats too, but I like to look at a total. So you can see here, as we sell off, this is going up, right? So you guys got to be very careful. So I, I read in the, so Hero's got their own bookmap room or their own channel on here. And I see guys in there like, this doesn't work. It's not, it's not reliable. This is not a red light, green light type of thing, right? It's you want to watch for divergences, but then you want to play divergences at important areas. It's just not, hey, there's this, we have this big divergence right here right now. I'm just going to turn around and get long, right? That's not how this works. And, and, and again, I don't claim to be an expert at this. I'm, he's just come out with this new one that is independent off of a book map. So I've been watching that because I have so many, I'm watching so many products on my book map. I, if I put Hero on there, it jams up my, my book map because Heroes it just takes a lot of data to run. So now that he's come up with this site, this, you know, it's an old independent on the website. This is now I'm going to really start watching this. And we've seen it in my trade room just the last few days. There's been many um, situations where this thing has been going the other way. And then eventually when we hit an important area, it reverses, right? So an important area, and he talks about this, if you guys, um, any anyone that's a Spot Gamma subscriber, you should have seen his webinar the other day. Um, I can post it if you guys don't have it, but I'm sure he posted it and he's got it in his room, I'm sure. Um, but he talks about important areas. Well, what's an important area? Right here, right? So if we get a little lower and that thing is still, you know, the, the put call ratio is still going up while the market's going down, this is an area where you could take a shot, especially if you get a volume set up, right? So, and this is still going to be based, you know, right at the yellow lug too so we have volume trigger yellow lugs right here if we get a setup that's going to be go time for a long and i will take it again i'll still take it aggressively if that for some reason you know i will still take a short i'm not real excited about it again structure wise and what i just showed you in spot gamma but if i do get short then i'll, I'll watch this area very very closely if it can't get through here i'll probably cover most of them so we'll, we'll see what happens I'm more hoping now this comes down to this voucher after looking at that spot gamma divergence. I'm hoping this comes down here and we get a signal like a big iceberg and I'm just going to, I'm going to jump in and I'm probably going to jump in partial very aggressively. So I'm not even going to wait for an 80, 80% of an ATR. We've been talking about this in my room as well lately. You know, when you're first learning the setups and learning or you're new to trading or you're struggling, you, you want to follow the rules exactly like, you know, the 80% wait for a retest. All right, here we go into this area. Um, but the better you get at it and the more you understand it, you could take trades in more aggressively, right? So for instance, right now, if I hear huge iceberg right here, I'm probably just going to buy a couple just, just because of what we just talked about, right? But if you're newer, you're just learning these, you want to wait for, you know, the 80% of an ATR to buy, right? That's just the same. Iceberg sell CO, 150 contracts. I'm surprised that, and you see we bounce right off of there, but I'm surprised there was nothing there. Really surprised. So I, I don't trade unless I see a volume setup, meaning icebergs, stop runs. That that's the key to my trading, right? And that it's the most important thing you can have. What the big money's doing, what the dumb money's doing. Again, I call dumb money retail traders just because we're not as informed as you know the big houses, the big funds. But I don't take a trade. I won't take a trade just off of. I'll get out of trades. You know, so say I was short here and it got here. I'll take I'll take off a couple. I won't get off uh, out of all of them. But I'll respect it, but I won't initiate a trade unless I see real-time volume supporting this area. 
And that's how you guys should trade in any area that you're trading, right? This could be VWAP. This could be, you know, a, a Bollinger Band or whatever you guys are watching. You want to see lines on a chart mean nothing unless the, the real money is playing there, right? The real money is what drives the market, the, the big money. So you want to you want to see, and it doesn't mean, don't confuse it, that the, the big money is always right, but you just want to see invested interest in that area. That's what's the most important, right? So my point is I'm not just going to jump in along here because I didn't see anything pop fire off, which is actually kind of, that that's maybe a signal as well that this thing could keep going lower, right? That you didn't see any kind of support here with, with the volume, but we'll see. Uh, let's go to Sweet Crude. That was only 130. I, I got to see at least 150, especially in these conditions. This thing's just nutty. I mean, it's like a sweep, sweep it two, 300 ticks at a time, so... <clears throat> stop run remember the stop run was only 150 and we haven't retested it either and we're definitely still above the yellow lug in nasdaq as well take a look i mean you see look at this look at this put call ratio still going it's going straight up I'm telling you the minute i hear a signal down here or an es i'm in hopefully i get one and paul's still speaking again. Okay, so anyway, NASDAQ. Right, the yellow lug as well, right? So this is an important area for both these markets. I'm expecting them to do this, especially looking at that put call ratio, but you know, we could do that and I follow my volume. So let's, if the volume sets up a bear setup, I'll take it. I'm not thrilled do it but I'll do it I let the real-time volume dictate how I trade like I just said any questions Bruce let me take a look here so I missed a potential short and um, actually no I didn't I mean volume wise this was a short you can see here this is soybeans I've been just crushing soybeans no pun intended was a joke because you know they have the soybean crush anyway we had the bad here this morning we had 213 cell ice that's this black zone this is exactly what it, what the pattern is in all these markets almost all the time I right? remember I said 80% of the time we retest break away that's obviously an ATR here's your retest here's your failure retest it again here's another failure the reason I didn't take this trade was because when I last look, we were right at the blue lug, and I don't take trades into lugs. I wait for new ones to be formed. So you can see here, this thing keeps, you know, if, if we were like up here, I would have definitely taken it. We're right at this lug. That's how much I respect these things and how much the market bounces off of them all the time. I want to see this rip through here and then form new lugs, and then I can take a short and then move and, and you know my targets down to the next lug. But I'm not taking shorts here. I'm only taking longs. And that, that setup obviously was a bearish setup, right? It was not a long setup. So I'm just going to watch this. It doesn't mean it can't move lower and build new lugs. I'm just not willing to, to short in front of a blue lug. That's how powerful those things are. So <clears throat> again, the Lovewood Levels, just go to lovewoodlevel.com, lovewoodlevels.com. <clears throat> she's got a three free day trial put put in that you saw it on the Bookmap webinar. And she's got like some special deals. I don't know exactly what she's doing, but. Um, that gas ice NG. 151 contracts. The net gas uh, numbers come out as well. Um, again, it's a, th it's a three three day trial, so you guys can check them out if you want. But they are they're like the crux of my trading. On top of the volumes, number one, but I use those. Those they're just unbelievable. You can ask anybody in my room how ridiculously accurate they are. Not it, not only just playing. You know, like you're like okay, so say you wanted to buy beans here. You're like, well, we're at support the blue log. I'm going to buy them, right? But being able to stay in trades, right? So it's like, say you got long here and you start moving up and you say you take some off at the yellow log and then you get another signal and you're like, you get in long, this is your target. And then you sit and wait. If nothing volume wise comes in to negate your idea, your longer data, I mean, this can do this for, you know, four hours and then it'll make it there, right? Well, it should make it there is, is the point. So it helps you stay in trades. That's one of the traders biggest 
fallacies is they can't stay in trades because they just don't really know. You know, they're watching their PL, they you know, they, it's in their favor, and then they're watching and give it all back. And they're in their favor, like, I'm out, man. I, I'm gonna take my 200 bucks and get out of here. And then they watch it go right there, right? So when you have these, it just helps you stay in trade. So you stay in it until it either hits the lug or if we're running up and then you see a bearish setup on the volume, then, then you can get out, right? But I'm, it's just it's just night and day and how, how you just have such confidence that we can get to these levels because it just happens all day. I mean, I can go through every one of these markets and show you over and over and over and over, right? It's, it's ridiculous. Let's see. Scott, there's a question about uh, do you still uh, uh, trade for other people? I guess. Yeah, I got an auto trader program that I do where I basically the account set up with the broker and then I I tell the broker, you know, buy two and ES here and then they fire it off through all the accounts. So that's just basically getting up and running. It took me a while to, you know, especially on these webinars, I'm sitting there showing you guys stuff and I miss trades all the time and it's hard to try to juggle it in my trade room, but I'm getting better at it. But it's basically just kicking off like now. It's only been up and running for a couple months. Uh, but yeah, so it's, you know, if I see a setup, I type in the chat box and then they fire the order off and it, and it fires off across all the accounts. So, okay. You know, that's for traders that don't have time to sit in front of the screens, which I understand. But I mean, if you have time and you, you know, you can learn how to do this yourself. That's the point, right? Like you want to be able to, that's the whole point of being a, a trader is you, know, you have the freedom to do what you want and you know, you don't have to answer the man and, you know that that's that's the point but you know i understand some guys some guys can't sit here all day or they still have a job and you know and that's fine and then that's what that's for for you know traders that can't sit there all day and want to want to participate all right pretty quiet here pretty quiet here let's see what's going on so just go to my website on that it says scott's auto trader Oh, yeah, I, 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 I put all your links in, into the chat there for everybody. Just click on the auto tra trader program and then put your name and the, the broker will send you like a, you know, how it works and what you need to participate. So it's like 12 grand. You want to, I'm still, you can still only trade micros and with, with even with 12 grand, right? So I'm trading micros for the program because, you know, with a $12,000 risk, you can't trade normal. This is a lesson for all you guys too that are trading you know, a five ten thousand dollar account and you're trading normal size e, e mini futures it, you're, you're gonna blow out your account you might get lucky and, and you know that's one out of a hundred that actually takes off and never has to worry about the drawdowns but you know it's gonna catch up to you you might get lucky for a while but if you're trading you know two or three e mini contracts when you got ten thousand dollars in your account like for instance if i put ten thousand dollars in here like if i have to risk more than six points I can't even put on a trade, right? So, you know, you got traders that, that trade like that and they put in five grand or 10 grand and they're they're only risking three points. Well, you're, you're gonna lose. You're, the market doesn't care that you can only lose three points, right? The market's moving. I mean, the ATR alone right now is eight. So if you're just trying to risk three, you're right in the middle of an ATR. It's not even half of an ATR. You're gonna get stopped out most times just on the on the whipsaw stuff, right? So it's like, you gotta, you got to trade according to your account size. So my point is, um, we put like a twelve thousand minimum for the for the trading account, and that allows me to you know I trade micros on it, but it, it also doesn't blow out your account. I don't want to put twelve dollars in there. But this is a risk spreadsheet we have in our in the room, and this is again if you're trading micros, you just it's be like a twelve thousand dollar account, one hundred twenty thousand, because these are showing you normal size contracts. You just make these micros instead and pretend this is twelve thousand. One hundred sixty-one contracts. Um, so that's it. Bruce, did you ever find out why there's no icebergs in the euro? That I just find that so strange. I know there used to be. Like, what they're, happened there? No, they they're not disseminating that data. Uh, so that's that's just that. Um, You're saying the CME is not? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What, what would that reason I, be? I, I, maybe they don't. I, I don't know if it's. I, I did get the answer, and I can't recall. Maybe they don't it's offer stock, native stock icebergs sell there. One hundred fifty contracts. Oh, that's strange. Yeah. Stock sell 
Contract. But you know you right. you can you can still kind of use the absorption indicator a bit to kind of get a little bit of insight if you see massive right. absorption or the, or the synthetic or, or the, the synthetic uh, but uh, yeah one or the other uh, yeah I mean it, it, you know it's an approximation uh, whereas the MBO right. stuff is spot on right. all right so you see this stop running here so this is going to be very important when all this moves out of this area. We're basically right at the yellow lug, right below it. But we know that that stock, uh, the um, option stuff is just showing long. So let's see if this pops out of here, I'm just going to go long. I'm not going to go long aggressively right here like I was going to up there because we are below the yellow lug. But I'll give this a shot out of here aggressively, meaning so 8.57 is the ATR. Five minute ATR, so 8.57, 6.85, so seven cents out of here, I will take along. And that'll put me back above the yellow lug, right? The lug was at 78, 75, so that'll put me at 80 and a half. I will enter this trade. Again, this is the aggressive way, right? If you want to wait for full ATR retest failure, you can do that as well, but I'm going to get in aggressively just because, like I said, this options data is. So again, this isn't red light, green light. We've seen, I showed my room this yesterday. Like you saw this divergence and the market like went another 20 points and then it finally turned around and then they caught up to each other. But, you know, at important levels, it could be a good trade. This is still like, we are a little bit below the vol trigger here, right? But it can go a little below and then, and then rip, right? It doesn't mean it's the exact price every time, right? So on the flip side, what I'm gonna do off of this, there was something in NASDAQ as well. I'll get there in a second. They were trying to bust below the yellow lug and then NQ as well. So I, you know, I guess I'm going to have to trade this aggressively because we're below the yellow lug. What I should, what I should not be doing is trading aggressively on the long side. But I'm willing to do that in this situation because of the vol trigger and the options information. On the short side. Let's see what the, I don't like shorting at extreme standard deviation or buying extreme standard deviations of VWAP, right? So this is one standard deviation they call DVA, daily daily value area, right? This is, this is where all these algos, not all of them, but a lot of these algos key off of and they play reversion in the mean. Here's, so this is one, this is minus one and a half, minus two standard deviation. You get to these areas, if there's not big money flowing through these markets, it'll rip right back. It'll rip right back. So you want to, Pay attention to the relative volume when we're in these areas to say, okay, is there bigger money playing here? And this isn't bad, right? Where you want to be very, very careful is if we're standard deviation or more away from VWAP and you see this, you do not want to be expecting a continuation or we call it a hugger where, where it will hug the standard deviation line, right? So this is okay to, to potentially short. Um, I'm just deciding whether I want to wait for a full ATR retest just because of that options info, but hopefully it won't even get below here and won't pop up, but we'll see here. And hopefully I'm not uh, confusing you guys. You know, I'm, I'm trading a little differently than I normally do as far as the lugs and getting, you know, taking aggressive, like, like this long. I would not normally take an aggressive long out of here because we're below the lug, but I saw that options info, so I, I'm considering it. So hopefully you guys aren't being confused by that. If you are, just put it in the room where we can discuss it further so again this was 104 150 that's my threshold i like to see closer to 200 in here but today there's just not a lot of, a lot firing off yet with paul speaking so we'll mark this up as well that's that we know we're below the hill or right at the yellow lug here and then the atr in here is 36.48, so 36 and a half. So you can have an APR is 29 and a quarter. So now, I'm not really impressed with this volume in NASDAQ, I can tell you that. You have one bar that got back to normal and then you've been below like, it's like 70%. And this is, I mean, this, this bar is still building, but this is not good for continuation trade is what I'm saying. 
Let's see where we're at on the VWAP. Yeah, see what I'm saying here? So you've got no volume coming through, meaning big money to, to, to push against these algos that play reversion, right? So you're at negative two standard deviation. You're at the yellow log. The odds of this continuing are much lower than this snapback. Right? And then you throw in this options data. It looks like a snapback, right? Let's see what happens here. So I'll take the long aggressively here. Again, I don't usually do this. I usually will wait for, you know, so here's that stop run. I'll wait for ATR retest failure, but everything that I just showed you shows me we're gonna revert probably back to at least DVA low or VWAP. So I'll take this long aggressively. So what's aggressively? 80% of a five minute ATR, which is 29 and a quarter points. The top of the zone's at 30. So I will get in at 50, 40, 59 and a quarter point. On one, we'll trade that. And, you know, I know what probably half of you guys are saying, like, well, that is ridiculous risk. Like, why? You know, I don't want to risk. I told you this. There was a guy in my room that, like, signed up to cancel, and I he said something like, I don't like the way that you, that you, your stops or something. And I, I asked him, like, what do you mean by that? He's like, well, I don't like to risk more than, I like to risk 10 points in the NASDAQ to make 20 and you risk way too much it's like well i'm risking way too much because of the volatility and the setups like it's not way too much it's what is appropriate right if you're just if you don't want to lose more than 20 points guess what the market does not care that you want to lose only 20 points you're gonna get stopped out most of the time like that is that is just such a fallacy with traders where they want to scalp you know even if you're trading off these zones it's like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna buy right here and i'm gonna i'm gonna stop out i'm gonna put my stop out i don't want to risk 10 points here well, guess what? This mean this area is it could do this for an hour. Like this means nothing. You put your stop below where the volume event occurred, then that's when you know you're wrong. Seven hundred contracts. All right. So if this gets an ATR below here, then I'm going to cancel that long, obviously. And the same with uh, so the ATR again is thirty six points. So if we get thirty six points below here, that would be eighty two, seventy six, about seventy five. So if this touches seventy five. Then what I'll do is I will take the, and I don't, again, I don't want to take this short because of the volume, right? And we're at extreme standard deviation. So I'm just hoping this does not get an ATR below here, so I have to take a short. So this is, you know, again, if there's decent volume coming in, you do get huggers all the time. See the standard deviation line? It can hug this thing and keep going. Again, 80 to 85% of the trade in these markets is our algorithms and the reversion of the mean algorithms. So if there's no big money coming in here, it's gonna do that. <laughs> it's just, that's just what, what happens. The problem is with the situation, Paul speaking, so the big money can pop in here at any time. That's, that's the wild card. And I don't like wild cards when I'm trading. All right, I'm praying this thing doesn't get an ATR, so I have to short this thing. Any questions about all that, Bruce? Uh, let's see. Um, You're at 100%, but it's just, I'm still afraid to short this. No, not really. I kind of caught up on some of these questions here. All right, so if I'm following my rule, my, just my flat out um, setup rules, I should be short, yes. Why? Because we had a setup, we just got it. 80% of an ATR below there. And yeah, we're below the yellow lug, right? If I short this, I because of the situation like we were just talking about, if I'm gonna short this, then I need to see retest failure. I'm not, normally, again, if Paul's not speaking and I see some, some decent volume here, I'll get in 80% of an ATR below this zone. Now I'm gonna wait if we do this and then this, then I'll get in. Again, I'm very reluctant to do that, but I'm just not taking this trade aggressively right now based on everything we just talked about. So again, at the bottom of this zone was 68 quarter. ATR is eight and a half. So we definitely got an ATR below here, right? 
So technically, I should have been in. I think right there. Let's see. Eight, eight and a half. So it's 6.8. So seven points below this zone. I should I should have been short. Not a normal day. All right. So that's 68, 75 half, 75 quarter. I mean, um, 55. Wait, what am I doing? 51 quarter. Sorry. 61 quarter. <laughs> Sorry. Got like four things I'm looking at. So I should be in right here, basically. But I'm going to wait and see if we retest fail based on everything we just talked about. And you can bet it's probably going to be a huge winner. And then I can sit here and complain the rest of the webinar that I should have taken that trade and just follow my rules. <laughs> but this is part of my rules, right? You got to be, you know, again, if when you're first starting out, you want to play these setups exactly you know, as prescribed, right? But as you start to understand the markets more, then you can you can change, you can, like I'm doing right here. I'm like, well, I don't really want to short in this situation at negative two standard deviation with very little volume coming through relative volume. If I do short and I, I want to see retest failure, then I'll short it, but, and Paul speaking to you, that's the biggest thing of them all. <clears throat> But for sure, this long idea is canceled. Why? Because we got an ATR below this, this stop zone, right? So this is officially a stop and hold setup. It's one of my six setups. Stop and hold. We got the stop run right there. Actually, I missed this. Hold on a second. While I'm sitting here chirping, I missed a setup right here. Hold on. I didn't even hear him. I didn't even hear him say this. My Mr. My, my computer friend. All right. So you can see the way you draw these zones. Get your little cursor. Look at your spike, right? Spike down to there. Follow the prices. Make sure it didn't go any lower. It didn't. Went up to about here. That's where it started. That's your zone. And make cell ice black. So I can distinguish. All right. So that's a brand new setup. So we, we revert. So I'm not no longer going to short off this stop run. This is the newest setup. This is what I'm trading off of, right? So now for this one, because we are below the yellow lug, I will wait for a full ATR retest. Go. And we'll go long. Again, I need to see that because we're below the yellow lug. But I know. You know, you know, if you're trading at home and you like, I like this setup. I want to be aggressive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you a verbal lashing for going long aggressively out of this zone, based on everything we just talked about. But I will, I will wait for a retest, a uh, full ATR retest. Now on the downside, 80% of an ATR, I should be going short, but I'm, I may do it. We'll see. Again, I don't want to because of what I just told you guys. But I want to see what I'm trying to do is I want to show you guys how to trade these zones. And I'm kind of adding in the, you know, my interpretation of things, which is not good for your learning. You know what I mean? So I'll take the trades. But if I'm just sitting here, you know, on my own, I, you know, I'm saying I'm not shorting that zone. But I'll take the trade because I want to show you guys these zones. And the other thing, too, I tell my runners all the time. I used to have the best intuition Ever. I was, you know, the huge scalper and that's all intuition. Like you just you're watching order flow. My intuition now is is basically almost always wrong as far as I feel like this is gonna happen to ask I'm like there's so many times I'll I'll put on a trade, I'll follow my rules and I put it on and I'm like, this is not gonna work, this does not feel good, this does not feel good, and then it's a huge winner, right? And so I basically feel one way, but I follow my system, right? So the whole idea is you guys are competing against algos. Algos are eighty to ninety percent of the market. So if you want to compete you need to trade like an algo. Algos don't have feelings. Algos don't think, oh, this might happen, this might happen. They just follow their their trade plan. So what I'm saying is if this does trade in 80% of an ATR below here, I will get short uh, because I want to teach you guys the right way. But there's going to be certain instances as you get better where you, you, know, you have to use some discretion. But like I said, most of the time my discretion is wrong and you're better off just following your rules because you have to trade like an algo if you want to be that, beat the algos. All right, so that means it's going to hurt me to do this, but I will. So bottom of the zone is at 60. 
ATR, 80% ATR is 6.8 points, so 7 points, so at 53, I'll go short. This is aggressive entry, right? The conservative entry would be wait for the full ATR, 8.5 points, retest failure. If we go higher, I'm waiting for 8.5 points, retest failure. So volume in ES isn't terrible right now. It gives me a little more confidence if I do short that. It's, it's normal. NASDAQ's pretty pathetic. I don't think we've ever done one of these webinars when like Fed was speaking or anything like that. So this is a this is a new twist. It's not very fun either. Again, I don't have like full confidence of my trades when the guy could say anything at any time and move the markets. Right? So what smart people do is they don't trade while the guy's talking. But I never said I was smart, so <clears throat> no questions, Bruce. While we're waiting for something to happen. Now's the time to ask, guys, when there's nothing going on, I can answer. Nothing. Bueller? Uh, no, no, no questions, really, Scott. Um, sorry, I was on mute there. Um, maybe, maybe a couple are streaming in now, but... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, well... A really good point you made. I mean, like um, your simple plan is, you know, the lugs and and then order flow and volume around the lugs. Uh, and uh, uh, however, due to this environment, then you're thinking differently because like you've got some other conflictions here. Uh, otherwise, I mean, this would have been a beautiful trade, right? Um, right. It, it, it's um, well, what I should have done. Right. What I should have done is enter the stop run. Right, so that this initial stop run, I should have been short based on my rules. I didn't yeah. do that, yeah, right, because I was complaining with time. And then what I could have done, so say I did get short here, ATR. This came in right after, so then I could have trailed my stop. My original stop would have been eighty percent of ATR above this zone. Now this came in, I could have trailed my stop down and then ridden, and, and it's it's working, right? So I basically broke my rules here because I'm you know nervous with Paul and everything in the volume and everything. And this is right now, this would be like a ten point winner, right? But Right. Yeah. The point I mean, is, you're, you're, it, it, no, I, I, I was just getting to to the point of like, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's this is where it, it's you're adding on top of, you know, your 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 plan, like other discretionary um, inputs here. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, sometimes the plan works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes the other uh, discretionary stuff works and sometimes it doesn't like uh, uh, at least right, well the plan is number one right but yeah so i just canceled i'll show you why let's, let's throw another discretionary <laughs> wrench into it now this is I mean, this is like spot on right so this is well, my room can see too so you can see this is really important so i'm not taking that short now you so see you see this red line this means so this is the s p 500 this is all 500 stocks in the e mini s p I mean that the S&P 500 index is composed off of um, it comprises the mini S&P or the S&P futures sorry or the S&P index so the point is when you see this thing get this is the 66 percent line when you see this thing get 66 66 percent or higher above this zone things are oversold meaning this is based on the TAS the TAS indicators um, if you guys remember I used to do the uh I used to do the um, Taz trade room. And so I have these boxes on here. I don't really trade off the boxes as much, but what it's telling you is out of all 500 stocks that comprise the indice, indice or the index, 
there's 70 percent that are below their TAS boxes so TAS boxes are just mini market profiles right so again back to like we were talking about VWAP how stuff reverts to the mean when that thing gets oversold you do not want to be initiating shorts it doesn't mean you just blindly buy but you do not want to be initiating shorts right so I am not I've just seen it happen too many times right so it doesn't mean this thing can't go higher we've seen this thing get up to this you can see right here so out of the 500 stocks in the index 316 of them are below their task boxes right we're getting higher and higher this can only go so high and then it's going to revert i do not initiate shorts when we are oversold so when we were down here i could have done it that's when that stop run fired in the yes but now i'm not i'm not doing it so and what's probably going to happen is we'll probably spike down here We'll fill this liquidity because liquidity always gets their way, and then we're going to pop higher. But I'm not going to initiate. Where I should have just initiated was off of this stop run, like I said, and then I'd be looking to get out right down here, right? I should have been in at 80% of an ATR below this signal, right? And that's already 10, 10 points in my favor, but that's fine. I mean, again, I've never done these webinars with Paul speaking, so or no fat guy speaking, so it is what it is, but... What's going to happen is this will get filled, this will get filled. We're going to be way oversold. I'm hoping I get a, a bullish setup because I'm going long. So let's watch. Nasdaq never retested its zone either. This one I shouldn't have been aggressive off of because we were still like right on the yellow lug. But the, this ES trade, I should already be short, but that's fine. <clears throat> let's watch how this happens. Let's watch the big money get their fills like they always do. And then it's free to do that. So bigger picture wise. This is just pulling back where we talked about this being one bigger one. Right. It's just pulling back to the top. Just do that. You could even pull back to the high volume node and do that. If it gets through the high volume node, that's when you want to watch for that. That's when you're going to get the big move. And that high volume node is probably about 43. 17-ish, 43, 20-ish. All right, so technically I should be short right here based on the setup. But again, like I said, with the oversold, I'm not doing it. So. You can see them, they're hammering these stocks. So again, this is tick strike. We've talked about this many times too. SNPI size for buy, yes. 738 contracts here we go i would just jump in along aggressively here but i want to see this I, that's liquidity needs to get their fill first so i'm not gonna plus this is not uh not quite threshold either so we'll wait so many times you guys so say you're short and you're you're playing liquidity to see what happens to maybe get out of some so many times you'll get close and it'll do that at least initially it'll still come back and fill this but it'll do that and throw everyone off because these algos pick up the size in the order book and they run it away because they're 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 set to run away from big orders to make the orders chase right so like for instance if i were to come in here and drop a 500 lot in on the bid the market would do that it would run away from it because it wants you to chase it wants the big money to chase it and then fill it and then it does that right so what I'm saying is, if your targets are liquidity, be ready for it, at least an initial runaway from the liquidity. Right? It'll it'll eventually come back here, but you have to endure this. See how it's doing this? And you might could pop, you know, ten points. And you're like, damn it, why did I why didn't I get out? So I'm just saying, if you're using liquidity as targets, get ready for the algos to to fire away from it the first time down there. Many 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 times, like it's doing right now. <clears throat> I hope I'm not making a mistake not drawing this ice. I mean, it's 660. My threshold 700. I mean, it's close. I mean, that that ice down there is just beautiful. I mean, like, uh, you know, they're front running the high liquidity. It's a massive ice per right. order. Um, right. You know, great, great stuff. Yeah. Liquidity will still get their fills, though, I'm pretty sure. That's why I'm not just jumping. That's why I'm not even drawing a zone yet. I want to see this come back down here, fill this, and then if more ice comes in, then I'll draw the zone. Then I'm going to go along. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, even even more down at 45. Yeah, and even more down here. <laughs> yeah. So this is another thing, right, guys? It's like like just like with the hero indicator. Yeah, it, there's a divergence. Let's see if it's still there's still a divergence. Let's see if it's still diverging. Yeah, I mean, look at this thing, right? So you could have been looking at this this whole way down and been like, yeah, divergence. I'm getting long. Yeah, divergence. I'm getting long. Yeah, long, long. And you, you just got killed. Right? Eventually, this is going to revert. Right now, we've got enough in our favor. This is about the end of this move down. It would be my call. Right. But my point is, this is not a red light, green light indicator. And the same, what I was getting at is with this liquidity, you know, when you when you bring up the, your charts for the day, the book map, and you go like this and you scrunch it in, and you say, wow, look at all that liquidity down there, we're going lower. Yeah, most likely because, again, the big money gets their way. But it doesn't mean we're going straight there. We can, especially right now, this is probably going to bounce. It's probably going to come up here. And then by the end of the day, it'll make its way down and fill all this. So just don't think, just because you see liquidity, it's going to be a straight beeline to that liquidity. Just like... If you see the divergence in the put call ratio, it doesn't mean you just start buying. Because if you did, you'd already be you'd be 50 points in the hole right now. Yeah, this this is a really good point. Um, and you know that that longer term liquidity, like for example, yesterday 4400, like you know I was looking for that as being a target, uh, and uh, we came up kind of close to it, and then sold off really hard at the end of the day. But you know, guess what? Overnight. And, uh, you know, during the, uh, the morning session, it filled it, you know, I mean, they just, they just stay in the book and, 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 uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be up there and, and get their way. Like, like you're saying, um, so, uh, uh, it, it just doesn't happen when, you know, we think it, or looking for it to happen. Well, we want it to happen. Right? When we well, want it, it to happen. But right. Sometimes. You know, yeah. A lot of times it does. A lot of times it does too. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll have these days like it just goes against you and against you. It, it keeps on filling liquidity at lower levels, lower levels, lower levels, and then you get a multi-day uh, uh, bullish move to the upside. Right. So you get to look at this thing. It's pulling back a little bit now, but this got up to got up to seventy-seven percent of the of the stocks were below their task boxes again many market profiles so it's still at 71 so i i'm fully expect i just want to see one more swish see this at least this first panel liquidity get filled get another signal and i'm, I'm going along i'm going to go along aggressively again this is outside of my normal rules but there's enough going for this trade where so we got oversold we've got baby lug so you see this target line that's uh, long in itself sometimes right or targets obviously if you're short this is a good target you've got extreme standard deviation and you don't have a ton of volume coming through this tells me this is everything tells me this thing's going to revert meaning at least pop back to bwap or pretty close Volume's not terrible nasdaq is pretty bad here it's not too bad but i'm fully expecting a a bungee jump here let's just wait wait for the liquidity to get filled and then we can make a decision let the big money get their way and guys this is not hypothetical the reason i know all this because this is the game i used to play when i was a big scalper right all day every day this was my game i put in like a thousand lot thousand lot market would be up here and then i would start selling a little bit selling a little bit selling a little bit and i see how the market reacted if it would let me do it then when we get close to my order i would just step on the gas and I'd like start just selling a flurry and people would join on me and then it would go and fill my bid, fill my bed. I just made 50 grand on 2000 lots and then I'd be out and then it could do whatever it wanted over and over and over and over. That was the game, right? And they still play that game. So, I mean, there was, I, I could spoof, you could spoof back then, meaning you could put in orders in the order book and pull them, fake people out. They made that illegal, but back then it wasn't illegal. I mean, that, this is what I did all day long. So that's what my setups and my volume analysis is all based off of, you know, being a big trader, knowing how I used to react when I was caught, when I was right, the games I used to play, watching big money play their games. Because, again, like I tell you guys in every webinar, I think, back then you can see counterparty. So you can see exactly when you ding an order, I would have a little counterparty box right on the bottom, bottom right of my screen. Again, I got to show you guys the videos. I just got to get them transferred to, to, the, to the desk. 
um, you could see it. So I would like ding, ding. I would like hit the bid, hit the bid, hit the bid. And I'd look over, I'd see, you know, one, 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 one. And I'd see the same house on the order. I'd see like a big order come in and I'd ding it. And I'd see it was the same house, like 714. This was, I think, Femat at the time, 714. So I would know it's one house, and I know how they react. It was like a big poker game, right? Well, of course, they got rid of that because the big players bitched to the CME enough, I'm sure, and said, that's not fair. We don't want them seeing who we are, and they got rid of that. So, But my point is, all of these setups and, and this philosophy with the liquidity and shocking they got filled, by the way, it's all based on when I was a large trader and how I used to trade it, right, and watching other large traders trade. So this is not hypothetical stuff. So would you? All right. So that look where they got filled. Would you first put your order in uh, your limit order as a target first, um, and then and then and then start advertising like uh, via the aggressive tape to get people to jump on board to fill you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And then. Um, uh, yeah. So you're you're getting your liquidity filled on the bid. Um, and, and that's where you're taking your profits. Um, are you also reversing there? Sometimes. I mean, it depends. It, again, it was all, it was a lot of it was feel, right? Like I would see mm -hmm. how the market would react and like, say we just nibble at my order, nibble my order and it would, it wouldn't fill the whole thing. Then I would just turn around and start buying the crap out of it and run it the other way. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that it was just, it was basically all feel trading. Mm -hmm. and, and the bigger I got, the better I did. Right, because I was able to push around the market, and yeah. that's exactly what these guys are doing. And you know, I had a mentoring session yesterday. I was telling a guy like, you know, and I, I'm sure people all day long, all you traders are like, this is manipulated, this is fixed, can't beat them. You're 100 percent right. It is manipulated. It is fixed. It is set up for the big money because they could push it around. But that doesn't mean it's hopeless. It means if you can't beat them, join them. With this information that you're seeing, you in the liquidity, the icebergs. You can figure out the games and play the games. That's what the setups are. It's playing the game, right? So don't be despondent that you can't compete with these guys. If This is why this is the most important information you can have on the planet, on the futures trading planet, is this is book map and the real-time volume and the SI indicator setups because you can see the games and you can, you can join them, right? That's the whole point. So it's not hopeless. And this is not a figment of my imagination of what's going on because, like I said, I traded it this way for many years and watched the big money trade it this way. So learn the games and play the games because that's all this is. It's one big game. Watch that. Uh, I think I talked about this last week. The Kramer interview he did before he you know, became a TV guy, how he used to be a big fund manager, and all he talks about it, how he would ma manipulate the markets, like just you know fake out, put big bids in, sell sell like – you know, he wanted to be a buyer overall, but he'd sell like 50,000 contracts to get the market going. And then he'd have all his bids below and then he'd get filled for 400,000 the other way. He would call in fake rumors, stuff like, like he talks about this. If you, you guys scroll up, I think I, did I not? Or you weren't here last week, Bruce. I'm pretty sure I put that in the room. If you guys want to see it, let me know. I'll look for it again. But it, that's the, it's a game. It's all a big game. And if you can understand what's happening, then you're on, then you have the edge, right? I'm just looking for something else here. Yeah, I mean, even reminiscence of a stock operator, the second half of the book, he talks about, you know, manipulation. A lot. Exactly. That's, a lot. If you have money, you can push it around. Right. That's it. And that's what big funds do. I'm going to draw this zone since there's nothing happening. It was close enough to 700. 700 is my threshold. I don't want to miss this trade because I have very, very, very strong feeling this thing's going to rip. Again, it may fill one more, that last band of liquidity below. And I'd love to see a little more ice come in here. Let's see, one more push, give them their fills. I don't think we're going to get down to 32. I could be wrong, but not, not. A, I think eventually we will today, but not right now. I think we may fill one more band, and then I think we're going to rip about 20 to 30 points, would be my guess. <clears throat> oh, they, I just saw that, Alan. Thanks for posting. Watch that thing, and see, they're going to make you really, really mad. One hundred sixty-two contracts. Or it's going to help clarify a lot of stuff of what you're seeing in these markets. Like, and again, once you know it's just a big game, then you play the game. Right, so this was gold. I marked this up. This was actually sell ice. Sounds like something else just came in. This is 
not threshold yet. So I will play off of this zone. While we wait for this liquidity to get filled, let's check out old bugs. The only thing about today, like I've said about 40 times now, is Paul's speaking. So, you know, this could just continue lower and defy logic, especially if he says something. Logic meaning the normal happenstance of these markets of what usually happens in here. But, you know, I'll still, I'm still playing what I, you know, see 99.9% of the time. 99.9% .9 of the time. All right, so gold is still above the yellow log. So I'll take this. That iceberg came in here, so I will take the long aggressively, meaning 80% of an ATR to go short. I need to see full ATR retest fail, and then I'll go short. ATR is 25.5. See right there. So for the long side, my aggressive long is 80% of 25.5. 20.4, so 21 ticks above there. As long as we don't trade in full ATR below here, this is still intact to be. It's pretty close. Hold on. What did I say? 25? 26? Yeah, that's 30. Okay, so that, this is negated as a long setup, right? I was going to go long aggressively because we're. So the yellow lug's here. That didn't draw very well, sorry. I was going to go long aggressively, 80%, but we, now we got a full ATR below here. This is now long, long setup negated. I'm waiting for a retest failure, then I'll go short. And the reason I need full ATR, which we got, retest failure, is because we're still above the yellow lug. That's how I trade it. So, like I said earlier, you may not get the retest, but in my experience, you're, you're much safer in certain situations like this one, waiting for a retest failure. 20% of the time, it'll just go, and then it sucks. You're like, I had that idea, and I wanted to trade it, but I didn't get my retest. But 80% of the time, you will get the retest. So especially in gold, especially in crude. Those are the two, number one, crude's number one, gold's number two in the retest of the zones. So you never have to chase chase the price. Let it come back, then get in. I really wish Paul would stop speaking so this can be normal trade. That would be nice. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that liquidity get filled. Who knew? Oh, we did. Always, always. I really wish I would have traded this stop run up here. This, this is what I should have done, right? I should have put on this 80% of an ATR because we were below the yellow lug. And then this came in. I could have added actually to this 80% of an ATR, carried my stop down 80% above this newest zone. And that's where my stop would go for this add. And potentially you could add to this one too. I just, again, no, this is not a normal, this would be ripping back up normally 30, 40 points by now. Everyone has seen it a thousand times, right? But uh, stop, stop, sell, yes. 580 for contract. Yeah, I'm definitely in long off this. Um, but Paul's SMPI speaking, so things are. By ES, 781 there contracts. you go, double whammy. Dumb money puke into the waiting hands of buy ice. This is what I was waiting for. Again, it still scares me to trade these because of Paul, right? I mean, you don't know what he's going to, if he says something, everything's out the window. That's what sucks, but I'm willing to take this trade. This is not done. This ice is not done coming in yet, by the way, either. We're going to go down and fill that last bit of liquidity first. I guess so. Why don't you make me get short up there, Bruce? Poor. Line you say, Scott, just follow your rules. Scott, just follow your rules. 30-point <laughs> trade, 20-point trade. All right, so here's your double whammy. Let me double whammy. It's dark blue. Again, one of the, my six setups. You guys can, I have the SI indicator course that teaches the setups, gives you all the thresholds for like 22 markets so you can learn how to trade these things. Learn to identify them and learn to trade them. All right, so you see we had 800, even more, because it kept coming in, buy ice. And then you had the dumb money puke, the retail trader puke, right in the waiting hands of buy ice. I know we're oversold. I know we're extreme standard deviation. I'm getting in this trade aggressively out of this zone. I don't. I know we're below the yellow lug, but this is an exception that I'm making here. I'm a little worried, again, with Paul speaking and that liquidity below, but I'll do it. 8.34 is the full ATR. 
eight percent of that is six point six seven, so six and three quarter points out of here. So it's fifty one and three quarters I'm in, which is gonna suck because it's gonna be right in this southern zone, which you may reject, but that's fine. SNPI size for cell ES. 703 contracts. I think it's always coming in. Hopefully it's not threshold, so I don't have to draw another zone. But... Wait, is this guy still talking? <sighs> so now i got to make sure my risk is correct, right? So if I get filled on this, so it's... Six and so say seven points. Seven and seven is fourteen, meaning I'm getting in seven points above the zone. I have to risk seven points below the zone. That's fourteen points. And then the zone width is another four points. So that's eighteen points. So then you go to the risk calculator. Again, this is one of the benefits of my room. They got them on the you can find them on the internet too, but this is we have this multiple versions of this in my room. So what did I say? Seventeen points or eighteen points? Yeah, I can only be putting on two, not three. So that. So you may say, wow, big deal, too loud. Well, that I, I'm adjusting to the volatility, right? That's This is how you don't blow out your account. I really don't like that I'm filling right in the middle of this zone, but it is what it is. I, I know I know the 20, 30 point bungee jump is coming. I just wish this guy would stop talking and then it, we can start to trade normally again. Here, by the way, is the retest of the gold zone. It's at 25, it's at 25 right now. So 20, 20 ticks below here is a three quarters of an ATR, so 80% of an ATR. So I get in at the bottom of the zone is at 96, so I'm in at 76. I'm just looking at the last two digits. That's that trade. The only reason I'm nervous about this is because of Paul, and I don't like that liquidity below, but it doesn't mean we have to go there right now. Let's take a look at uh, the other factors I was talking about. I, I know we're still oversold. Should be anyway. Let's see. That's pulling back a little bit, but we're still 75%. I'm fine with that. And then let's look at the hero. What do you say? He's finally done talking. That would be welcome. Yeah, and you see this option flow. That's 11:30 a.m. Eastern time. We will be expecting the U.S. four weeks bill. The U.S. is due to sell four to five billion dollars of those. All right, fill on that. So now my stop goes seven points below this zone. We have 34, which is I'm filled on gold too, which is uh. Basically, right in front of this liquidity. It is what it is. So, what I'm supposed to do here, again, my normal rules, because we're below the yellow lug, I should not have been in aggressively. I should be waiting for the full ATR retest failure. I got in aggressively because all the factors we've been talking about for the last hour. So, we'll see. I'm almost positive this will come back and retest because every time I break my rules, I get it. I get the finger, the middle finger from the markets, but. <coughs> There's enough going for this where I'm being aggressive. But if you are following rules, you know, with the lugs and you have the lugs and you're following these zones, then you should be waiting for ATR, which this is now. Test failure. And then you get in. Then you get in here. Let's see. That's for sure. It's, yeah, 8.29. Eight it's definitely 8.29 points above there. SNPI size for cell ES, 701 contract. Okay, so now what we can do, if this is threshold, at least trail our stop based on the new setup and then possibly add to this, right? Let's just hope this gets to, there you go. All right, I'm getting rid of this zone because it was prior. Now we have, see the cell ice coming in here? So 
I'm just going to start right there. SNPI size for Excel ES, 700 contracts. All right, this is a big area. See how much, see how it just came in and got done spiking? There you go. Now, at least I can, I can control my risk here. Meaning, not control, why I was already controlling my risk with my stop, but I mean, I can tighten up my risk because this is a brand new setup, right? So ATR, again, is eight and a half. I'm pretty sure it's about seven, six point eight, so seven points below here. See, they're starting to buy muscle. Um, so six and seven points below here is where I will step out. Now I can trail my stop, right? This is, what, this is how you trail your stops based on real-time volume, not because you don't want to lose money or get money back. So 750, so we'll just say 51. SNPI Siceberg Cell ES, 700 contracts. So 54, 53.75 is the actual price, right? So now I'm, you know, I'm not risking anything. I mean, relatively is what I'm saying. A lot of sell eyes coming in trying to stop this market though. Wait, is that right? No, I take that, sorry guys. Let's do this again. 51, 44, sorry, 43.75. So, you know, I just saved myself 10 points of risk, right? If this comes back. The problem with this stop loss, or what I'm gonna do here, is I do not like stopping out in the middle of zones, right? So I'm gonna just move this a few more points. I'm gonna put it down, I'll just put it down here. Yeah, it's four, four points, four and a half points. But this is an important area. Obviously, we just ripped out of there. So I want to, I want to make this market. If I'm going to be wrong, I want to see this push through this entire zone, through this liquidity, and then you can stop me. I'm not. I don't want to stop out right in the middle of the zone. So again, this is another. You know, um, it's, I can't think of the word. I'm trading it differently than I normally do, but I do normally do this. If my if my stop is in the middle of the zone, I will move it out of the zone, the prior zone. This is 400, 500, I'll just, I'm just gonna leave this. So there's a very good chance it stops at this prior ice zone that we broke down from, but. So what I'll do now, uh, you know, I got in my aggressive trade. Now that this new setup is occurring here, or already occurred, now I'm gonna wait for retest failure to add to, add to this trade, right? I got in aggressively, now I'm gonna wait for retest failure. Let's take a look at the lugs once again. Remember, just keep this in mind, this huge divergence. And like I said, for all you guys complaining in the hero room that this doesn't work, it's not red light, green light. You just want to pay attention to it because eventually it will start to revert. You just got to find the right areas to do it. And that's what the, what you get from the setups, right? Now you see this is pulling back here. So it's not oversold anymore, but we have the position on, so it's fine. It doesn't have to be oversight, oversold to take along, but I don't take shorts when the thing's oversold. Paul's still speaking, by the way, which is neat. All right, that affects gold too, by the way, obviously. Um, what did I say? My stop is 24.7, so 28 is above here. I'll stop out of this trade. Hopefully, Paul doesn't rain on my parade. 27. That's that trade. Short gold. Stops at 27. Probably can have more on, but I'll just leave it. that. Let's take a look at our lugs. So this is what I was telling you guys why I was didn't want to go short. I mean, it did move lower, but boom, right off the, you know, it hugged it for a while, but it eventually will revert. We were oversold. That's why I got in aggressively. So we're still below the yellow log. So now I'm waiting for a full ATR away from here, which again is eight, eight and a half points. So we're at the top of the slugs at 60, so we're looking at 68 and a half. Right, 
retest failure, then I'll, I'll add to this trade and the stop goes in the same spot down there at 43 and a quarter. I'll be shocked if this just makes it rips right through this prior place. So it's probably going to do this. It's probably going to do this, do this, do this, do this, come up here, retest and then go. <clears throat> Again, I really wish this guy would stop talking so I can just trade without worrying about headlines. <clears throat> I think I've said that probably 400 times in this webinar. Why not put the stop at the blue line? What blue line are you referring to? 43.45, I don't see a blue line at 43.45. What are you referring to? What do you mean by correlations? I've never really looked at core. I've never traded off correlations. I mean, I'll keep an eye on the Nasdaq, but I don't. There's many times like Nasdaq's above the yellow lug and the S is below, or there's a there's a bearish setup. I'll, I'll take opposite trades. I just had opposite trade on a couple days ago in my trade room. I think I was I was long Nasdaq and short ES, or vice versa. Speaking of this, I'm gonna cancel that order. This is the first retest of the zone, by the way. Nothing has really happened. So this is actually a situation where I could go short this. We're not over. We're not oversold anymore. It is the L lug, right? I just want to make sure we didn't get any other setups. I may short this and show you. Like I don't. I don't look at. This was only 150, but it is a retest. Like I don't. I don't. Not, not take a trade because you know Nasdaq's ripping. I mean, if if I get the setups in my market, I I trade them. All right, so what I'll do here, because we're not oversold anymore, doesn't mean this is going to fill either. I, I hope it doesn't fill because that, might, that means my ES trade is ripping. 35.3 is the ATR and NASDAQ. 28 and a quarter. So now here's a retest. If we fail 28 and a quarter, I'll go short this. Uh, so that's uh, 82, 70, no, 82 and a half. It's 20, 79 and 79 and a half, basically, and just the entry there. So I will trade this, right? Because we had where I was supposed to be. Nice for by CL 151 contract. Um, I should have shorted this aggressively because we're below the yellow lug. I didn't do that because it, you know, I've said it a hundred times about the oversold, blah blah blah, right? But now we did this at this retest. I'll short it, and it's kind of a hedge against my ES too. I'm not doing it because of that, but you know, if ES turns around and sells off this, then at least I'll make it. I'll make something on this, and you see what's down here. You know we're getting there eventually. Let's see. Is crew going to force me to put a trade on this nutty market? One hundred forty. So, like I tell you guys all the time. Be careful what liquidity you're trading off of, right? This is nonsense. This is algos, someone messing with the market, right? This is not liquidity I'm talking about. Even this, I don't really pay attention to. This was just put in. I and mean, this this has been here for a couple hours, so you can potentially look at I'm talking about liquidity that's been in there for hours and hours and hours, maybe overnight. That's liquidity that I look for targets, right? Not not this nonsense. This is just algos screwing with everybody. That's all it is. But it still looks like we're coming up to 116 eventually here. I love how I say it's so nonchalant. Like it's five. That's five hundred ticks away. That's five dollars away. Normally you get a five hundred tick moving crude. It's like it's like once out of the, out of the year. Now you're just like, yeah, we're probably going up five hundred ticks from here. This market is nuts. It can be really good for gas prices. Ten dollar gas, be cool. Oh, 
let's just draw this. I don't even know if I'm going to try this again. The ATR is it's insane. It's insane. It's it's come down a little bit. It's still 90, 90 ticks. So that means I can so aggressively at 90 ticks. Well, I'd be a little less than that. So eight. So say it's 80, 70 ticks or whatever. That's still between my entry and my stop loss. That's like 140 ticks. And then you got to go the distance of the zone. So for instance, this is 50 ticks. That's like 190 ticks I'm risking on a, on a one lot. I mean, I could basically put on one. <laughs> So you may just say, and then and then you're susceptible to headlines, which I've taken on in Chin earlier in the week um, on a couple of headlines. So you're probably better off not trading crude right now would be my advice. So like I said, I would be surprised if this thing made it right to this prior zone and look at where it stopped. And now we're going to do this and then this. But I still need to see full ATR retest to add to this long. You guys will be amazed once you start drawing these zones, how the market respects them, you know, when you come back. So say I was long from like way down here, you could use these zones as, as a target to get out of some, right? If it struggles and starts to move back out, get out of one or two or whatever, right? Because this is obviously respected. They're, you know, they know where this last, what happened in this area before, right? It's traders that were caught. This is the way you have to look at it, right? This was a zone that I drew. It was, it was obviously sell ice right here. Yeah, 800 sell ice. Well, if it was sell ice, there were buyers, right? So aggressive buyers running into sell ice. Well, any trader that held through all this and it comes back, they're saying, thank you, I'm out of my trade. Thank you, I'm going to scratch that. I was wrong, right? And that's what many times leads to the retest failures. Where it comes from. All right, Bruce, I'm out of gas here. Um, any other questions? Let's see, I can see two. Let's see. A lot, a lot of stuff from Alan. I don't... Yeah, I think you've, you've answered you've answered his questions about the um, uh, uh, correlations, etc. So, um, okay. the uh, no, that, I think we're all kind of caught up here um, on, uh, okay. on the questions. All right, so so again, I'm I'm long this. I will add to this off of this zone as long as nothing new comes in you had all the sell ice here if we go atr retest failure i'll go long i mean i'll add to it and then stop it in the same spot that's barring if anything else new comes in right and then i will short nasdaq if we do fail off of this zone i'll short that and then my stop's going to go 80 percent of atr above the zone I'm hoping I just, just doesn't, doesn't even fill and the market just rips, right? And this just goes like this and the yes goes like that and I can cancel this order and then ride the long up. So I'm hoping for. Uh, and then gold came back into this zone. Hoping it, again, Powell could say anything and this thing could just go like that. So that's fine. I assume that risk when I'm trading. That's why if you're not doing well or trying to preserve your account, it's probably a good idea not to trade during this whole ordeal, let alone when you have the whole ordeal and he's talking. Right? And then I'm watching crude fail out of the zone. This is, looks like broken ice now. Remember the ATR is 89.7, so 90 ticks. So that means this is gone. This has got to get down to... 35 for it to be an official broken ice setup that would be an ATR then you look for a retest failure and you go short I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're above the yellow or I just missed a trade but potentially let's see oh we're below the yellow log so I should be in this trade aggressively hold on one second let's just see so 72 ticks below this zone again guys if you're not accomplished trader i wouldn't even be trading this right now so 70 72 that's 55 53 i should have been short it's basically right here all right short that this is again so watch this right so that that's i got in aggressively because we're below the yellow lug right All right, so now I have to risk 72 ticks above this zone, which puts me at 1142. <laughs> right in front of that liquidity, too. One eleven forty-two is what I meant to say. 
So I'm risking 190 ticks on this trick, right? I mean, yeah, it, it could go 400. So I'm willing to do that, but that's the setup, so I took it. So short that, short gold, long ES, and I will go short NASDAQ if this comes in close to me. All right, guys, today was a little different day with the Paul, with the Fed speaking, Paul speaking, you know, a little weird, but hopefully you're, you know, you're learning the setups, why they work, what they are, so on and so forth. That's the point of these webinars. So, again, book map and the SI indicator is the most powerful thing you can use in your trading. I don't care what you're looking at. You don't have all the information if you're not utilizing this real-time volume info. All right, Bruce, thanks for having me. I'll see you guys. Yeah, uh, next yeah thanks. Thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, good webinar. I mean, uh, uh, you know, just peering over your shoulder like this is uh, is just fascinating. Uh, so, uh, I think, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. I have a good day. I'm headed to the golf course here shortly. Uh, yeah. yeah sounds, sounds good. <laughs> I'll see you guys next Thursday. Okay. Thanks, Scott.